Hi, this is Dave from JavaCodeJunkie.com and welcome to our next video in the Learning Java FX series. Today we're going to talk about the Grid Pane Layout Manager. The Grid Pane is a Java FX layout manager that lays out its child nodes in a flexible grid of rows and columns. The child nodes can be placed anywhere within the grid and they can span multiple rows and columns. So to save time, I've already created a new Java FX project. We've been doing this all along, so this should be easy for everyone to do on their own. So I won't go back over any of that. So let's create a new grid pane. So now I'm going to create a number of different controls, uh, two labels, two text fields, and two buttons that I'm going to put into a button bar. And we're going to add all of these into the grid. Now that we've created the controls that we're going to add to the grid pane, let's start adding them one at a time. To add a control to a grid pane, we use a method called add. Grid dot add. The first is a node that we're going to add to a specific row and column of the grid pane. The second parameter is the column index. Now the column and row indexes in the grid pane are zero based. So the first column is column zero and the first row is row zero. And once we've specified the column and row, if we use the second add method, we could also specify a column span or a row span since controls can span one or more columns and or rows. So we're going to specify the first name label. We'll go in at column zero, row zero. It will span a single column and it will span a single row. And we'll do the same for the remaining controls. We'll put the first name text field in and this is going to be the next column over on the first row so it's going to be column one of row zero and it's also going to span one column and one row and likewise for the last name label and text field column zero of row one spanning one column and one row column one of row one spanning one row and column. So next we want to add the button bar which contains the two buttons the save and cancel button. So again grid.add button bar the column is zero the row is two and this button bar is going to span two columns and one row. So let's run at this point and see what we come up with. It's not going to look pretty, so we'll fix that up later. But we do have all of the controls. So we have the first name label, the first name text field, the last name label, the last name text field, and the two buttons, which are in a button bar and span both columns. So next we're going to set the gap between the rows and the columns. So now we do have some space between the controls at this point. So it's starting to take shape. And next we'll put some padding around the grid. Organize the imports. Run it again. So now we have looking a lot better. So we have some space in the padding around the outside. We have some horizontal gap between the labels and the text fields, as well as some space vertically between the two rows or between the three rows. And as a happy coincidence in using the button bar, we will see that both of our buttons are right aligned and they're both the same size. So we can make that bigger, but nothing at this point changes in terms of the grid because we haven't added those constraints at this point. So let's now add some column constraints. So we have two columns, so let's create a couple of column constraints. Column one. And column two, so I'll just copy that. 
and change it to column two. And we'll add those column constraints to the grid. Column constraints uh, can specify a, a width for the column, and it can be specified in a couple of different ways. One being a pixel width, and another being a percentage of the total width available. So let's look at how we would specify a pixel width. Let's say column one dot set preferred width, just like we do with any of our other controls and we'll specify 100. We'll do the same for column two. And for column two, just so we can see the difference, we'll specify 200. So let's give it one more run. And we'll now see that the first column gets a width of 100 pixels. The second column gets a width of 200, so it's twice the size. Again, still nothing changes if we resize. As I mentioned, we could also specify the column width as a percentage. To keep it one third of the width, I'll say 33% for the first column. And since the second column is twice as big in our previous example, 100 versus 200, I'll use the remaining 67%, which would be twice as much for column two. So no change. If we do specify a percentage width for uh, column constraints, that overrides the minimum preferred and maximum for the columns. If we enter numbers that sum to greater than 100, then the numbers that are entered are then used as a weight for the column. And how that works is we'll take the width for each individual column. So let's look at the first one, 50 and divide that by the total of all of the columns. So 50 over 150 is one third. And the 100 over 150 for the second column is the remaining two thirds. So the 50 and the 150, again, will give us the same as using the 100 and the 200 pixel in the setting of the preferred width. So we run it again, and we should have exactly the same thing, and we do. So if we were to change that now, and let's say, make this 200, you'll see that the second column will now be longer. The second column is four times as wide as the first. So next we can look at uh, some alignment of the controls. So let's look at uh, the horizontal alignment. What we're going to do is we're going to change the alignment of the two labels. And we'll set the horizontal alignment for the child label first name, and the value is HPOS enumeration. Use right. We'll do the same for the other. So again, I'll just copy and paste and change to last name. And again, just to comment to show what this is, we'll run it and you'll see now that the two labels should be aligned to the right so they're up against the text controls still respecting the gap that we have the horizontal gap that we have in between and because we're now using percentages when we resize our window the size of our controls also resizes So let's now look at setting the horizontal grow priority. This is a static method on the grid pane class. We specify the child. So I'm going to specify both of the text fields because the, the labels, it really doesn't make much sense to have those grow the first name and the priority dot always. And the same for the last name text field. And run it again and see what the difference in behavior is now that we've set the horizontal grow priority and specifically set the column widths to 100 and 200. 
So you'll see the first column stays at 100 because we haven't set a horizontal grow priority for either of the labels, but we have set it for the text fields. So the text fields are going to grow horizontally as the size of the window is increased and they will shrink as the size of the window is decreased. One other thing that we can do, which is, is really good when you're debugging your grid layouts, is we can call a method on our grid that will display the grid line. So let's set grid lines visible. We'll say true. And when we run, you'll see the grid lines. So we show that we do have two columns, three rows. We have padding on the outside. We have a horizontal gap between the columns. We have a vertical gap between the rows. It makes it easier to visualize the rows and columns that you have in your grid pane. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment area below. Hit the like button and subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. I really appreciate it. As always, please take care and keep on coding. I hope to see you in the next video.